Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. I am Sean Anderson, Most Valuable Podcast, and the upcoming segment is from our full Fast Break podcast that we recorded. And if you do want to check out that full podcast, head over to Blog Talk Radio slash The Fast Break. You'll be able to find the full podcast over there. This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. This is the Fast Break Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Anderson. Alongside me, as always, Ricky Weber. What's up, what's up? Did you just wave at the back of your hand? This is great. He waved at the back of his hand. Well, what's up, what's up? I, I, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> you did like one of these. It was awesome. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we got a great Facebook podcast for you. We're talking Carmelo Anthony. I couldn't start out with that. Try to salvage I, that I, I, had to, I had to do the what's up, what's up first, or else Sean would have got mad. Yep. Anyways, uh, we were talking about Carmelo Anthony. Will the Knicks move on from Carmelo Anthony? He's saying he's okay with it if the Knicks want to move on with him. And, and him and Phil also had a meeting before this, before all this came out, and they, they cleared things up. We'll talk about it. Uh, we're also going to be talking about should the Timberwolves move on from Ricky Rubio, not. I was gonna say Ricky Whitmer. I, I was about you to say. Doing, I mean, you looked, you looked right at me, and I went. Uh, Rick, how do you feel should, about being moved from the Timberwolves? Maybe they should. I, I I've been putting up zero points a year this year. And finally, yeah. we're gonna be talking about draft stock. OG a newbie from Indiana. Indiana. And, uh, and, yeah. and we're gonna be talking about his draft stock. Just recently tore something in his knee, and we're gonna be talking should he stay in college, uh, and should he try to improve his draft stock, even though he is kind of old. He's a he's a sophomore now, mm-hmm. and will be in his older. junior year. That's old, that's old, old. In college basketball. Yeah. Literally a month older than me. But anyways, let's jump in. First topic here is Carmelo Anthony. Him and Phil had a talk. Melo was feeling a little slighted, thought he was being pushed out of New York, and Phil's like, no, it's okay. And now Melo coming out recently to Newsday, he said, but if the Knicks don't want him, he'll consider a change. So now it's really the discussion of will the Knicks move on from Carmelo Anthony? Do you think the Knicks will? Yeah, I think they should move on. I, I think both parties uh, benefit from you know the split. I think that Carmelo Anthony, well, he's put up good numbers. You know, the teams haven't been good at all. Mm-hmm. They they failed to kind of put pieces around him after giving up so much to just bring him to town. They kind of mortgaged their future, hoping he'd be able to carry them through uh, to you know some relative success in the playoffs. Uh, hasn't worked out that way. And it, I think the timeline for uh, Porzingis and, and the future of this Knicks team is going to be outside of where he wants it to be. So if he gets to leave town, they get something back for him, build the future better, and he gets to go compete for a championship in his last couple of years in the league. Well, it's one of those things where I'm on the same page as Dave. I'm With me, though, it's not a will they? I don't know if they will. Should they? Yeah, they fucking should kind of a thing. Well, that's not the question. Well, and I know. It's will they. It's one Nut up or shut well, up, Rick Yes. Get I, the fuck well, off the fence. It's one of those things. If <laughs> I'm running the Knicks, yes, He's he always will be fence. traded. But it's one of those things where with the – I just – this management with the Knicks, mainly Phil Jackson, I don't know what's going on with his head. I don't think he Half cares, the time really. with this team. He doesn't have to care. I don't need <laughs> to know what's going on in that head. But it's no, I'm saying he doesn't care about what's going on with the team. It, oh, he doesn't care what's <laughs> going on with the team. But if I'm a fan of the, if I was a fan of this team, I'd be frustrated because it's one of those things where you get mellow from the Nuggets. You think that's gonna kind of start your clock for okay, let's build around mellow so that we can win a championship. That doesn't happen. Really, the Knicks have been, I'm gonna say, kind of a laughing stock. Of the NBA, more like mm, a wow, strong word. You've got this superstar, but you, this is what you can't do. And I know you can give the I don't well, know about laughing stock. Well, Seventh year in New York. Well, Melo's not going to get through the super team that was in Miami, and he's not going to get through LeBron James. But I think the Knicks have to sit there and go. I kind of think of Sean. What I used to tell you, kind of get your panties in a jumble about Tom uh-huh. Brady, uh-huh. is they need to. What I said about the Patriots and maybe getting rid of Tom Brady, the Knicks need to do that now. They probably needed to get rid of Mello maybe even last year. The button for this needed to be pressed. And right now, if I'm Phil, I'm basically saying the two teams or whatever teams that Mello said, these are the two that I want to go to, I'm on the phone with them. Mello's for sale. What do you want for him? We need something for him because... Look at his age. Look at where he's at. You're not going to be able to build around him and win a championship. Yeah, and you do have a player in Kristaps Porzingis who you can build around. And obviously, yep. 
with the current team, I don't think you're going to be building around with with them. We talked to Derek Rose last week and, and how you know he's most likely going to be gone after the end of the year, or, year, or at least he should be gone after the end of the year. I think will they know? I don't think they will because I think just the Knicks won't find a trade partner that will work out. And I think that Melo, he's kind of in that that where I, like I feel like Melo likes to talk a lot, but I don't think he'll actually move on because you know Denver talks yeah. were always going on, but it never actually happened. I mean, it will. I mean, it, it, it took did. so long, but it took so long to happen because he's been always on right, that trade room. Try, try to find fair value for Carmelo Anthony in this league and to one of the his approved teams. Uh, that's not going to be easy. That's what I'm saying. It's not going to be easy now either. And even though he is older, I, I just I, I don't think you're going to find the right partner. You're not going to find the right team, the right cap room, the right move. I just feel like it's going to be too hard to do it. I don't think they will. Should they? I think that. With his contract currently set up, I don't think you need to do it right now. I think you can wait till the end of the season, but I think you should and, and start the next season with a clean slate because yeah. you know, the, the Knicks, we constantly see this with the Knicks. Is that their best move since 2000 has been drafting Chris Dapps Porzingis and trading for Carmelo Anthony. Those have been the best moves. They haven't paid off. Well, at least Carmelo hasn't <laughs> really paid off for them. But, I mean, it wasn't a bad move. I mean, Carmelo was still fantastic with the Knicks. But outside of that, they're constantly making bad signings. I mean, that Bargnani signing. Bargnani, Amari Stoudemire. Did you, I don't know if you heard this. Uh, I think I heard it on, like, TNT or, you know, one of the pregame shows. There, maybe it was ESPN. I don't know. But they're talking about how uh, the Knicks organization was looking at picking up uh, Lamarcus Aldridge in the year before the year that he went to eventually San Antonio. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That he was, you know, in conversation for, all right, what do we need to do to bring him to the Knicks? And it was the nope, nope, we're going with Bargnani. Like that's our guy. And they were they were pretty much shut down. Like I think it was from the GM level to ownership somewhere in that range. And she's like, all right, at some point you just got to question yourself and be like, we just keep shooting ourselves in the foot as a mm-hmm. franchise, like. I understand that, like, yes, aging veterans, like, whatever, but still, they, they need to go ahead and just build young, build around KP. He's the future. None of the guys in this team right now, I mean, outside of, like, the, the role players are really going to be there when they, you know, want to compete. So mm-hmm. you might as well let guys like Brandon James, Derek Rose, uh, probably even Courtney Lee, Carmelo Anthony, all these guys who have some value left, who you can ship, ship. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to give you money for mm-hmm. – uh, our, our boy Joe, but still, it's just, that's one you're going to eat the bullet on. And that's the one thing the Knicks constantly are making bad signing. That was one thing, I, like Amari, Allen Houston, uh, Stefan Marbury. I mean, really, they haven't been able to make the right moves. And I think you have made a fantastic move and kind of fell into a move with the Knicks, with, with Ja going before KP and, and people really not knowing what KP truly had. And, and we've Call seen it. that Chris Stapps Porzingis has been absolutely fantastic. So. Yep. I, I think that, again, it's going to be hard to find tr- fair value, and it might be easier to do that in the offseason when pieces are more movable and, right. and, and cuttable. So I think that's going to be the big thing. But I, I don't see any hope in the Knicks anymore. I mean, you, you see a team, and I was watching the game on, on Thursday between the Wizards and Knicks because it was on TNT, and you know you saw a little bit of a comeback, and you saw them running D-Rose and, and Brandon Jennings, and, and Chris Stapps had a fantastic putback dunk. Uh, but oh, it, he came out of nowhere. But it just seems like they're all trying to play hero ball, and Chris Stops is the only one that's not. And it really is like, and half the time I'm like, I know Melo had a ridiculous second quarter and set a Knicks franchise record, but it was really like that. that I'm like that's the one guy you need to. Was that the abuse. game that uh, Melo was given everybody sass about for the last second shot that uh, Porzingis just whiffed that three? Well, like, no, no one took a three, and then oh, General no, different stole game it. Then it, yeah. it was it was uh, you know they drew up a play and everything, mm-hmm. and like Melo literally walked out hell like. Pfft, this I think it was Courtney, just, Courtney no. Lee stood behind the three point line for, with like the ball in his hand for like seven seconds. And it was thirteen seconds left. And everyone's like, "Well, what are you doing? Pass the ball." And they tried to make a pass and force it, and the, the the Wizards stole it. But it just seems like they haven't made the right moves. And and really, I, again, it's it's hard to find value. And obviously, they should do all these moves. But will they move Mello, D Rose, Brandon Jennings, and get all of that out and just really push towards a rebuild? Well, like with Derrick Rose, he's not like with me. I'm considered just. Fucking wait till the end of the year. Don't resign. Let him walk and be done. Because with him. it's That's one fair. of those things where I don't think anyone's. I'm really looking at Mello. And out of the two teams, I mean, the the Tribune that I was looking at, the Chicago Tribune, they said that the two teams that he mentioned to Phil were mm-hmm. the Cavs and the Clippers. And the thing that I look at is the Cavs. You're not going to pull a fast one over on them. No. But looking at the Clippers, I mean, CP3 injury, Blake Griffin coming back from an injury. That's a team. That's another organization that 
not the best run organization in the last few years. Huh. Maybe you can try to pull a fast one over on the Clippers. Yeah. I mean, what do, not you, like what do you mean a, re- a fast one? Are, not, we, are we talking like two first round draft picks? I'm saying like just and... any kind of a deal. Like that's the one where I feel like the Knicks could get a beneficial deal for them. I'm not saying well, yeah. like, I mean, the I'm Clippers have like more Boston, pieces to move. I'm not saying like Boston, Brooklyn kind of a deal, but <laughs> this is one where maybe they do get a favorable pick, like the pick that they want. Because the one thing you got to look at for the Knicks, they have their own picks in 2017, 18, 19, 20. They haven't given up any of those. So you don't have to worry about, oh, we got to get a pick for next year because we don't have one. But also for the Clippers, I mean, you're not going to get a decent pick from the Clippers. Right. And, the Clippers and if you're giving them Melo, you're expecting a 20 through 30 pick. Yeah, and you're not really getting any value back because you need to add contracts or you don't need to add. And the, the trade that I found that works is Jamal Crawford, who, I mean, he's not going to change anything franchise-wise. Wesley Johnson, he's a decent role player, but he's a role player. And then Paul Pierce, because he's got a ton of money, but Paul Pierce is going to be done next year. So, And that's the thing. Maybe you try to find guys who... Expiring contracts? Expire and just take on a... Bu- like, that's the thing. Maybe take on a bunch of expiring contracts You're and then value. Dump, the mo- dump the money at the end of the year hit the free agent trail with a plan. Like, that's the but, thing. I know you roll your eyes, but that's what the unless Knicks you get really two need first a plan. Round, unless you get two firsts from them, like, expiring contracts don't do anything for you. There's literally, I mean, you might as well just keep Carmelo at that point. There, There's literally no point unless you're getting two firsts back for him. See, that's the thing. I feel like in the offseason... And the first one would be good, like we said. Yeah, I feel like in the offseason, that, that, you know, those teams might expand yeah, a bit. because you got new draft picks coming into teams, potentially. You've got free agency messing with things, like... There's a whole lot more. There's a whole lot more on the table. One thing I want to say though, I feel bad for Carmelo because constantly he he wanted mm-hmm. to go to New York so badly, and they, they finally get the trade worked out mm-hmm. with Denver. I don't. And then, well, I, he's kind of a whiny. <laughs> he chose to stay brat. in New York. He had the chance to come play for a contender. Mm-hmm. Who? You know who? Yeah, Are okay. you talking about Chicago? Oh, I'm talking Are Chicago. You talking about when he when he whined and dined yep. in '69? He, everybody. <laughs> he could have gone. He could have gone to AJ he, to to. he chose to come Kobe back. Was, Kobe took him out to dinner. Kobe didn't tried he? to. <laughs> he had his options open at that time. He chose the money. So, you know what? I could care less. He can go 15 win seasons for the rest of his career. I'll be smiling. I'm spiteful. Like <laughs> you really, I threw a pen at Dave earlier, and Dave held on to this pen for about the whole he like, sat on 50 it. minutes. He, he sat, sat on it so and threw it back it. at me. So Dave holds grudges. So that, I, I mean, I don't know if I really, really take your input here. with a, I haven't taken it with a grain of salt. Do, do, you feel, do you feel bad for the guy who decided to take money over winning games? Mm. Because I don't. But also, I mean, we all could. We, well, I'm we, on Dave's side. I, I also bitched about loyalty. I bitched that about KD He's leaving. A, he already demanded out of Denver, and I know that wasn't the ideal situation. You know, we, we find out more and more about that as uh, George Carl's book mm-hmm. is coming out, which mm-hmm. is kind of an interesting insight. But it's just like. Look, the guy has never really found his real home. New York is his home because, hey, he's in the spotlight. He's in the media. He's and on the he, front page all the time. And he went to college there in and, and, yeah, it's his hometown pretty much. So, like, when you talk about loyalty, I don't – like, yeah, he's loyal to New York, I guess. He's loyal to the money. I'm, I'm sorry. He has no loyalty. It's just money for him. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I guess I feel bad for him in a sense because I, I just I, I always root for Carmelo because he was just super fun to watch. And he never got the ring, and I know that – I, you know, he, again, he took the money, but again, I, I also bitched about KD leaving Oklahoma City, so he did show loyalty, if you want to say, but I mean, yeah, that loyalty was backed up with a with, with a big ass contract. But I, for something, I, I just feel I feel bad for him just because I kind of want to want to see him succeed. You know, D Wade succeeded, uh, Bosch succeeded, LeBron succeeded, uh, Darko got a ring. I mean, Carmelo out of that top five, he's really the only one that I, I believe hasn't had a ring. Big, if, I, biggest remember, bust? if I'm remember. <laughs> If I remember, <laughs> maybe that's a video for a different time. If, I, if I'm remembering, Darko my, Milic, if I'm, hey, Darko, he's the best player from that class, man. First to ring. ring. If I'm remembering, if I'm remembering that draft correctly, Darko I think. Darko Milic. Uh, yeah, if I, I was re- remembering that the draft correctly, out of the top five, he's the only guy without a ring. And then, yep. uh, Evan, you know, if you expand to the top six, Chris came and I don't think he got a ring. But uh, anyways, uh, final thoughts. I just, I, I guess, I feel bad for him, but I don't think a, a trade's going to happen. I think if it's going to happen, I think it's going to be happening next season. I think they should. I think we all agree that they should, but Will is just such a difficult yeah. maybe, and tricky maybe, situation. I mean, it would have to be like some convoluted three-team trade to get value because not no no one team can really give you great value for Carmelo. Thank you. Oh, shit! Oh, that's just one of our videos. Scared me a little bit. Don't forget to check out that one. And also don't forget to check out patreon.com slash podcast. But thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.